Hi, welcome back to Studying Simplified. I'm Liza, and today I'm going to be going over the mean value, intermediate value, and extreme value theorems. I'm not going to be really um, explaining and proving each one. I will be defining them, but I'm more discussing how they really, how they differ and when to use each one. I know sometimes like the names can all get mixed up, but they're actually pretty different. So they, they're similar as well, but they're more different than similar. So it'll be pretty straightforward once you get it. So again, I'm not going to be proving them or explaining them really, but I did provide a definition of each one for you. Um, just as a refresher, if you do need, like, if you don't really know what they are, then I would do some research on that before, and then I'd come back to watch this video. Uh, okay, so the mean value theorem for a continuous and differentiable function on the interval from A to B, there's a point C where F prime within that interval where F prime of C is equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. This will make more sense when we get into it later in the video if you don't really remember, but hopefully that was enough to jog your memory. Um, I just found these pictures online also. I find that helpful in general. If there's a theorem or a rule for math that I can't remember, you can just like look it up and go to images. It should jog your memory. Um, intermediate value theorem for a continuous function on the interval from A to B. Um, N is a number between F of B and F of A where um, where f of whatever c value exists equals n. Um, this image right here explains it in a little more detail. And then the extreme value theorem is just for a continuous function on a closed interval, the f has a maximum and minimum. So I made this table here. I'm going to um, run through it pretty quickly, but you can pause the video or take a screenshot if you want to understand it more in depth. But essentially, I'm just going to be explaining more in depth, like specific similarities and differences. Um, so all of them for extreme mean and intermediate uh, value theorems, it all has to be continuous on the closed interval, but for the mean value theorem, it also has to be differentiable on the open interval. Um, the intermediate and extreme value theorems are tell you something about the original function, but the mean value theorem is for derivatives. Um, this is what it finds. It's the definition. I kind of went over that in the last slide. And then one other difference is that the intermediate and extreme value theorems, well, they're more of concepts. Whereas the mean value theorem is a specific formula, of course, it's tied to a concept as well, which tells you how to use it, when to use it, and why to use it. But that is actually a specific formula. Well, the intermediate value and extreme value theorem don't have set mathematical formulas the same way. So I've gone ahead and made some practice problems. Um, the first set of problems is these right now, and you don't need to actually solve them. Just say which theorem you'd use, and then I have a second set of problems where I do ask you to solve them. So I'm gonna run through these maybe a little bit quickly. So if it is too fast for you, go ahead and pause before I get to the answer and think on it. Um, so I use the same structure of the problem for this whole first set. So f of x is continuous on the closed interval from zero to six and differentiable on the open interval from zero to six. f of zero equals four and f of six equals 12. So for this first question, is there a value of c between zero and six where f of c equals seven? So again, you don't need to answer it, but the theorem you're going to be using is the intermediate value theorem. I am just going to answer this one because it's quick and it makes sense to, ex to explain why you'd use the intermediate value theorem. So since um, c is between 0 and 6, so then you have to look at f of 0 and f of 6. If f of 0 is 4 and f of 6 is 12, so you know that any value between those two points has to be fulfilled by some c. And 7 is between 4 and 12, so yes, that does work. And if I put a value outside the interval, the answer would be maybe. Like, you can't say no definitively, but the intermediate value theorem doesn't actually prove that. Okay, and then second question, same frame. But now I'm asking, is there a value c between 0 and 6 such that f prime of c equals 4 over 3? So for this one, you're going to use the mean value theorem. Now, if you go ahead and solve this, the answer is yes. But again, you don't have to do that. Um, you know that you're using the mean value theorem because it's asking for the derivative, right? F prime of C is the derivative. So if two more before we get into actual math that I'm gonna have you guys solve. So again, same frame of the problem. So I ask you, does F of X attain a maximum value? According to the extreme value theorem, it would. Again, you don't have to explain why, but the extreme value theorem just states that a function has to have a maximum and a minimum value if it's continuous. So the function is continuous, therefore there must be a max. And last problem here, same frame, but a little bit different actually. So fx is continuous on the closed interval from zero to six 
indifferentiable on the open interval from zero to six and f prime of c equals eight. Find one set of values that f of zero and f of six, six could equal. Again, you don't have to solve it, but hypothetically, if you did, you'd be using the mean value theorem. So if you did want to go about solving this, you would set up the mean value theorem equation and, in, and then for f prime of c, you'd plug in eight and then you'd have on the bottom, you'd have six minus zero. And then on top, you'd have f of b minus f of a. So you'd cross multiply that out and solve it. Um, just normally you're solving for f prime of c. So I wanted to give you a problem that was a bit different. Okay, now we're going into a set of three problems where I'm actually going to ask you to solve them as well as state which theorem you're going to use. So let's get into them. The first one, it says, f of x is continuous on the closed interval from negative 2 to 0 and increases at a constant rate. f of negative 2 is 4 and f of negative 1 is 5. State what theorem you're using and find the maximum and minimum values. So this one uses a theorem, but it also does require some logic. So the theorem that it uses is the extreme value theorem. And you know that because it's asking for a maximum and minimum. So the minimum is negative, is, is four, I'm sorry, and it occurs at negative two, and the maximum is six, and it occurs at zero. You don't need to say where it occurs in this problem, but it, I thought it was helpful for the explanation. So a couple of things you have to realize looking at this problem is if f of x increases at a constant rate, that means it's a linear function, right? Because say it was the rate was two it's not in this case but it would go up by two up by two up by two that's a line it'd be a line like this um i really hope that didn't mirror my screen because then it'd be negative but it's, it's a straight line either positive or negative depending on increasing or decreasing um now so if a function is constantly increasing then you know that the minimum is going to occur at the lower end point right the first end point so in this case, that's negative two, and it's given that negative two is four, so that's why your minimum is four. Now, the maximum's a little bit trickier because I didn't give you, so this one's gonna occur since it's a constantly increasing function, this one's gonna occur at the second endpoint, the final endpoint, which is further to the right. Um, I didn't give you uh, f of zero because I wanted it to be a little more challenging, but you'd figure this out. This is where the logic applies. So if the function is increasing at a constant rate, Again, it's linear, and I do give you two points, and that's enough to find the slope. So the slope of this problem is 1, and then right here, I just did y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That equals 1. So f of 0 is going to equal f of negative 1 plus the slope, which is 1, because 0 is 1 away from negative 1. So 5 plus 1 is 6. Now, for this next problem, we have f of x is continuous on a closed interval from 5 to 10 and differentiable on that open interval. They give you f of 5 is 12 and f of 10 is 27. What theorem are you using? And find one guaranteed value of f prime of c, where f of c is a number between, where c is a number between 5 and 10. So the answer to this, it's the mean value theorem. And the answer is 3. So we're using the mean value theorem because the question is asking for the derivative. So that means we're using the mean value theorem. Now, I wrote all the math out here. I'll read it quickly. Um, so this is the formula f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And then b is the greater number, so b is 10, and then a is 5. So f of 10 minus f of 5 over 10 minus 5. That's 27 minus 12 over 10 minus 5, which simplifies that to 15 over 5, which equals 3. Now, one last problem for you. Here, I'm actually, it's two theorems in one. Um, so f of x is continuous on the closed interval from 1 to 9 and differentiable on the open interval from 1 to 9. f of 1 equals 12 and f of 9 is 20. Find one value of f prime of c sub 1 that must exist and one value of f of c sub 2 that must exist and explain how you find each. Um, c sub 1 and c sub 2 could be the same or different points. I put the subscript just so you don't, it doesn't confuse you thinking they're the same, but I also wanted to continue to use c for the sake of continuity and so that wasn't confusing either. Um, so the two theorems we're going to be using are the mean value theorem and the intermediate value theorem. So we're going to start with f prime of c. Um, so you use the mean value theorem because it asks for derivatives and it meets the qualifications. So plugging it into the formula, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, you just read all this math out here, it's going to become 1. So f prime of some c equals 1. There is some point along the function where the derivative equals 1. Now, f of c sub 2, there could be any value you want over here. So 
um, it's just any value between 12 and 20 because that's the that's how the intermediate value theorem works. So I didn't state one value because there's infinite possibilities. It could be 13, it could be 15, it could be 18.9284. It could literally be any number as long as it's between 12 and 20 because for the continuous function to get from 12 to 20, it has to cross every point in between. So that's this video and I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.